Japan Airlines Flight 1628 was a UFO incident that occurred on November 17, 1986 involving a Japanese Boeing 747-200F cargo aircraft. The aircraft was en route from Paris to Narita International Airport, near Tokyo, with a cargo of Beaujolais wine. On the Reykjavik to Anchorage section of the flight, at 1711 over eastern Alaska, the crew first witnessed two unidentified objects to their left. These abruptly rose from below and closed in to escort their aircraft. Each had two rectangular arrays of what appeared to be glowing nozzles or thrusters, though their bodies remained obscured by darkness. When closest, the aircraft's cabin was lit up and the captain could feel their heat on his face. These two craft departed before a third, much larger disc-shaped object started trailing them. Anchorage Air Traffic Control obliged and requested an oncoming United Airlines flight to confirm the unidentified traffic, but when it and a military craft sighted Jull 1628 at about 1751, no other craft could be distinguished. The sighting lasted 50 minutes and ended in the vicinity of Mount Denali. Topic Observation On November 17, 1986, the Japanese crew of a JAL Boeing 747 cargo freighter witnessed three unidentified objects after sunset, while flying over eastern Alaska. The objects seemed to prefer the cover of darkness to their left, and to avoid the brighter skies to their right. At least the first two of the objects were observed by all three crew members, Captain Kanju Tarauchi, Japanese, Sine Kianshō, an ex-fighter pilot with more than 10,000 hours flight experience, in the cockpit's left-hand seat, co-pilot Takanori Taimfuji, waiting Longshan in the right-hand seat, and flight engineer Yoshio Sukuba, Diane Shanshung. The routine cargo flight entered Alaska on autopilot, cruising at 565 miles per hour 909 kilometers per hour at an altitude of 35,000 feet 11,000 meters at 1709 the Anchorage ATC advised a new heading towards Talkeetna Alaska topic <laughs> two objects As soon as Jull 1628 straightened out of its turn, at 1711, Captain Tarauchi noticed two craft to his far left, and some 2,000 feet 610 meters below his altitude, which he assumed to be military aircraft. These were pacing his flight path and speed. At 1718 or 1719 the two objects abruptly veered to a position about 500 feet 150 meters, or 1,000 feet 300 meters in front of the aircraft, assuming a stacked configuration. In doing so they activated a kind of reverse thrust, and their lights became dazzlingly bright. To match the speed of the aircraft from the sideways approach, the objects displayed what Tarauchi described as a disregard for inertia. The thing was flying as if there was no such thing as gravity. It sped up, then stopped, then flew at our speed, in our direction, so that to us it appeared to be standing still. The next instant it changed course. In other words, the flying object had overcome gravity. The reverse thrust 
caused a bright flare for three to seven seconds, to the extent that Captain Tarauchi could feel the warmth of their glows. Air traffic control was notified at this point at 17 hours 19 minutes and 15 seconds, who could not confirm any traffic in the indicated position. After three to five minutes the objects assumed a side-to-side -side configuration, which they maintained for another ten minutes. They accompanied the aircraft with an undulating motion, and some back and forth rotation of the jet nozzles, which seemed to be under automatic control, causing them to flare with brighter or duller luminosity. Each object had a square shape, consisting of two rectangular arrays of what appeared to be glowing nozzles or thrusters, separated by a dark central section. Captain Tarauchi speculated in his drawings, that the objects would appear cylindrical if viewed from another angle, and that the observed movement of the nozzles could be ascribed to the cylinder's rotation. The objects left abruptly at about 17 hours 23 minutes and 13 seconds, moving to a point below the horizon to the east. Topic: Third object. Where the first objects disappeared, Captain Tarauchi now noticed a pale band of light that mirrored their altitude, speed, and direction. Setting their onboard radar scope to a 25 nautical miles (46 kilometers) range, he confirmed an object in the expected 10 o'clock direction at about 7.5 nmi (13.9 kilometers) distance, and informed ATC of its presence. Anchorage found nothing on their radar, but Elmendorf's NORAD Regional Operations Control Center (ROCC), directly in his flight path, reported a surge primary return. After some minutes, as the city lights of Fairbanks began to illuminate the object, Captain Tarauchi believed to perceive the outline of a gigantic spaceship on his port side that was twice the size of an aircraft carrier." It was, however, outside First Officer Tamefuji's field of view. The object followed, in formation, or in the same relative position throughout the 45-degree turn, a descent from 35,000 to 31,000 feet, and a 360-degree turn. The short-range radar at Fairbanks Airport failed, however, to register the object. Anchorage ATC offered military intervention, which was declined by the pilot due to his knowledge of the Mantle incident. The object was not noted by any of two planes which approached Jull 1628 to confirm its presence, by which time Jull 1628 had also lost sight of it. Jull 1628 arrived safely in Anchorage at 1820. Aftermath Captain Tarauchi cited in the official Federal Aviation Administration report that the object was a UFO. In December 1986, Tarauchi gave an interview to two Kyodo news journalists. Jull soon grounded him for talking to the press, and moved him to a desk job. He was only reinstated as a pilot years afterwards, and retired eventually in North Kanto, Japan. Kyodo News contacted Paul Stoika, the FAA public information officer in Anchorage on December 24, and received confirmation of the incident, followed by UPI on the 29th. The FAA's Alaskan region consulted John Callahan, the FAA Division Chief of the Accidents and Investigations Branch, as they wanted to know what to tell the media about the UFO. 
John Callahan was unaware of any such incident, considering it a likely early flight of a stealth bomber, then in development. He asked the Alaskan region to forward the relevant data to their technical center in Atlantic City, New Jersey, where he and his superior played back the radar data and tied it in with the voice tapes by videotaping the concurrent playbacks. A day later at FAA headquarters, they briefed Vice Admiral Donald D. Engine, who watched the whole video of over half an hour, and asked them not to talk to anybody until they they were given the OK, and to prepare an encompassing presentation of the data for a group of government officials the next day. The meeting was attended by representatives of the FBI, CIA and President Reagan's scientific study team, among others. Upon completion of the presentation, all present were told that the incident was secret and that their meeting never took place." According to Callahan, the officials considered the data to represent the first instance of recorded radar data on a UFO, and they took possession of all the presented data. John Callahan however managed to retain the original video, the pilot's report and the FAA's first report in his office. The forgotten target printouts of the computer data were also rediscovered, from which all targets can be reproduced that were in the sky at the time. After a three month investigation, the FAA formally released their results at a press conference held on March 5, 1987. Here Paul Stoika retracted earlier FAA suggestions that their controllers confirmed a UFO, and ascribed it to a split radar image, which appeared with unfortunate timing. He clarified that, the FAA did not have enough material to confirm that something was there, and though they were accepting the descriptions by the crew, they were unable to support what they saw. The McGrath incident was revealed here amongst the ample set of documents supplied to the journalists. The sighting received special attention from the media, as a supposed instance of the tracking of UFOs on both ground and airborne radar, while being observed by experienced airline pilots, with subsequent confirmation by an FAA division chief. <laughs> subsequent Alaskan sightings Topic: Alaska Airlines Flight 53 UFO. On the 29th of January 1987 at 18:40, Alaska Airlines Flight 53 observed a fast-moving object on their onboard weather radar. While at 35,000 feet (11,000 meters), some 60 miles (97 kilometers) west of McGraw, on a flight from Nome to Anchorage, the radar registered a strong target in the 12 o'clock position at 25 miles (40 kilometers) range. While they could not distinguish any object or light visually, they noticed that the radar object was increasing its distance at a very high rate. With every sweep of their radar, about one second apart, the object added 5 miles to its distance, translating to a speed of 18,000 miles per hour, 29,000 kilometers per hour. The pilot however relayed a speed of a mile a second to the control tower or a speed of 3600 miles per hour 5800 kilometers per hour but confirmed that the target exceeded both the 50 miles 80 kilometers and 100 miles 160 kilometers ranges of their radar scope in a matter of seconds. 
The object was outside the radar range of the Anchorage ARTCC, and additional radar data covering the specified time and location failed to substantiate the pilot's claim. KC-135 observation A U.S. Air Force KC-135 jet flying from Anchorage to Fairbanks once again observed a very large, disc-shaped object on January 30, 1987. The pilot reported that the object was 12 meters 40 feet from the aircraft. The object then disappeared out of sight. In popular culture The incident was described on an episode of the documentary series The Unexplained Files, broadcast on Science Channel on 23 September 2014. <laughs> Notes <laughs>